the other student is not joining today also maybe so hypothesis testing is actually when you do some guess to a data so these are some steps involved in this so in hypothesis testings uh, what we come up with uh, we have two types of uh, hypothesis one is null hypothesis another is alternate hypothesis and these are like two your assumptions and one is uh, meaning one is your assumption and another is alternate of it that is negate of it but on that we will do testing and to perform that testing uh, like your uh, that hypothesis is correct or not uh, okay so hypothesis is uh, in which we have to do testing right for testing that hypothesis there are some statistical tests and we perform those and those are known as parametric so parametric tests are when the data will be normally distributed we, our assumption is and non-parametric the data is not distributed normally and these are the list of some test name are there and these tests also have some condition we will talk later on that like what condition we are going to do those testing and how we do this so they have uh, mainly we will have some matrix we will calculate on those data sets or sample data and uh, we will use tables to come up with like our test is correct or not we want to reject or null hypothesis or do not reject actually so so actually what is hypothesis so it is uh, it's something you are doing a good guess about uh, population so there are two things uh, population we discussed that day also so population is nothing but entire sample set entire uh, not sample set you can say entire uh, thing which is not actually you can do analysis on it so the like we told about like you want to get the average height of uh, men in entire India or all the population of India so something like that like, we known as population so you know we cannot go each and every one and collect their height and get the height average height of the each of the individual in the population it is better to actually collect some sample and based on that create some uh, assumptions so that assumption we put into null hypothesis so uh, which states that there is no relationship between variables so that is what we wanted to say and in the one way is something you are guessing about the population actually and second one will be uh if it comes this yeah, I don't care. or this will yeah so first thing either you some you are wanted to do edge some guess about the population something like yeah mean is this value or and remember this is, should be educated guess it should not be too random in nature you are just guessing yeah 200 uh, 200 centimeter is the height that cannot be possible because yeah person sides generally in like yeah lesser than 200 so it's better to guess something which is making sense and second thing you want to have some relationship between variables 
in those case we are actually doing hypothesis of samples or generally these are all the hypothesis we will be doing for sample so sample is nothing but population is entire you randomly sample them independently and a small data set which you converted so those are known as sample points and this sample points we assume like it is having all the characteristics of populations so entire world is a population and then you can say this is small set is known as sample and what you are doing you are either some guess you are making about this those are known as hypothesis then hypothesis will have two statements actually we will be known as h0 and uh, denoted by h0 h h1 or h a h0 is when you say there is no relationship between the variables so the example is like increase in the number of uh, cancer patient is not due to increase in the population such statements you will make actually or you will be saying like the samples mean is not equal to 175 centimeter or 150 170 centimeter so such statements are known as uh, null hypothesis and when you are making this one you will say uh, it's a positive statement then you will be saying me uh, samples average height is 170 centimeter and actually yeah, similar example yeah. similar like you know, height example can be taken alternative hypothesis here in the null hypothesis they have used a similar statement but both use different meaning on a relation yeah yeah no they are so, saying for the the can num increase mm -hmm. in the number of cancer patient is not due to increase in the population but here it is positive in the re relation they are saying cancer patients are increasing due to increase in the population level just opposite of this statement is always alternate hypothesis and generally this hypothesis null hypothesis is opposite what we want to investigate so you want to do like some analysis and saying uh, these two variables are dependent actually so null hypothesis is you will say they are not dependent and you will find some evidence saying you are rejecting the null hypothesis right so your idea or you can say in the end you want to reject the null hypothesis then only your this hypothesis is correct actually whatever hypothesis you made so the idea that is why you will come up with null hypothesis such that you can reject it if you are and you have to find some evidence saying uh, yeah so you can say mm, yeah this cancer example is nice here yeah, you you can say it is obviously there will be no correlation between cancer patient and population right there will be oh yeah there will be this is pollution yeah yeah pollution so that is why they will find any evidence to reject this then they can say yes there is a relationship between cancer patients increasing with respect to pollution yeah so you have to decide like yeah, what should be the null hypothesis which you want to reject while after conducting this statistical test on this and your aim is either reject the hypothesis or not to reject the conclusion of these statement or hypothesis testing is always this you will not say i am going to accept the null hypothesis that is not the correct way to say this we are just rejecting the null hypothesis if you are happily rejected then in that case you are accepting the alternate hypothesis if you are not able to reject you cannot do anything on alternate hypothesis actually so it is like if you are not able to reject you have some evidence which is actually saying alternate it uh, this your null hypothesis can be true so 
this is all hypothesis right you cannot 100 percent sure that it can be true so that is why we say these statements are hypothesis it's like yeah there can this is chance of experiment meaning you can say this is probabilistic statement actually there is a chance that uh, cancer patients are increasing due to pollution level but you have to find some evidence evidence to support them so while doing this statistics uh, testing and all you are actually performing that so this is opposite what we are expecting and this is in uh, correlates with the same what we are expecting and and we do not perform any test on the alternate hypothesis that is also thing uh, we just focus on null hypothesis and we want to reject them so we will conduct experiment and we try to uh, say that this x uh, what to say this null hypothesis i want to reject or do not reject yeah that is all we have you have any question on this uh, no. yeah okay and then how you are going to do that you will have like you create null hypothesis one statement and the second statement some acceptance level is there alpha we call it like significance so after some so you will say one alpha value saying 50 percent or 5 percent generally we give this value whatever value we are going to get by this uh, sample test value should be lesser than this value so t whatever we are going to get the statistical value uh, which is yeah this t is actually here this step so we decided five percent and then you collected your sample decided to perform the test and state the null and high alternate hypothesis already you have done then compute the t value that is uh, the here actually some formulas will be there it's based on sample and uh, based on uh, what type of test you want to do and uh, then find some critical value that is actually and compare that critical value with the test value and make the decision to result of a sub null hypothesis this we will talk later more about and uh, after that so yeah so statistical tests are to perform some inference you want to find uh, from the population that is why there are two tests this is also also v2 generally so for this to conduct we should have some sample selected and various tests are performed on the sample to find some inference of the population and this is for normally distributed samples assumption and for this one non-normal actually data set so parametric tests are applied those are under when we assume or we know that population is normally distributed or it is assumed to be normally distributed and we know some of the uh, what to say matrices already that is mean standard deviation we are aware of them and these are the some tests actually so t test z test f test ANOVA Pearson coefficient correlation so some correlation test also is there uh, which assume yeah these two are uh, data set or sample is actually correlated with the population or not you can tell such a thing and this is only applied these parametric test when your data is actually quantitative in nature that is uh, you can measure them actually quantitative either you can count them or you can measure based on a scale or some some scale actually and scale of measure is nothing but uh, either is a interval or ratio so when we say ratio i think you can say yeah 30 percent 30 percent of the people is actually falling in this scale 
uh, in in this interval actually so that interval scale we call it so what is like yeah when you measure them you can actually find something bell curve kind of condition where all the data are distribution so that is why samples is also having same property of the population and then these tests will be easier to apply it get applied that is only the idea and non parametric meaning here i think we did not talked about this uh, skewed distribution when we say skewed distribution that is meaning it's uh, not bell it is like uh, how to say yeah this kind of curve and uh, something like this this we can say is left skewed and uh, similar is example is this type of curve we are saying right skewed meaning it will directly decrease too much here and but the bell is like no bell it is there yeah exponential type it will decrease so left skewed and right skewed these types of two distribution also comes into picture when your data is something like this instead of uh, the normal bell curve yeah so non parametrics when you are aware like yeah, this data or population data actually you are talking about so population is not distributed uh, normally or it is assumed like yeah, it is not normally distributed and other way is like yeah when you are not, not sure it is uh, we cannot apply parametric you just directly go for non parametric these tests are distribution free also then actually you can assume that uh, uh, this data is distributed some other non normal so you can say it's a variable distribution or some other distributions actually and then you can uh, try to fit that distribution also there are some tests which is actually tell like yeah is this data is this distributed or not some binomial distribution it or not something like that you can also test actually or gaussian this because gaussian is only normal uh, you can say yeah this data is poison distributed or not then actually these tests will come into picture and for these tests we will not use mean standard deviation there are some other uh, matrices those are like median you can use here because these data are qualitative in nature so you can count them on sorry you can group them and count or rank them actually so the ranking is only possible such data we are calling as a qualitative data and on that you can either do scaling actually nominal scaling and ordinal scaling either you can rank them or group them based on some stats nominal scale or ordinal scale is both actually right yeah that is uh, nothing that uh, ranking of anything yes and there are some examples you can write size square test u test man whitney test we used to go on and h test that is kurskel wallace test pearson means rank correlation test yeah it is like yeah i did sampling i found yeah this is the rank of uh, some student it should be always same uh, similar rank in the next sample set then Pearson rank correlation test will come into picture something like that anything uh, for non metric and metric do we have any examples like uh, uh, real examples uh, non metric or non parametric right uh, for both like uh, in earlier slide, you had a differentiation like for a null hypothesis. And yeah, here we have one hypothesis. more slide. I think we on this, maybe you can get clarity. So they assume this data is normally distributed. We cannot assume in the parametric, non parametric, there is 
normally distributed or not we made assumption about population also here we are not uh, making any assumption on population we are just saying our sample is not distributed normally and now we can do the test actually here we will use mean uh, standard deviation are used here we don't have any parameter to be used actually in it is like you can say these parameters you cannot calculate also then also you will use non parametric it is not like other way now and applied in the case of qualitative that is uh, you know like this numbers or anything you can calculate average height or number of students kind of thing and but in this one you have to check like yeah is it ranking based algorithm uh, so you will qualitative data we are we are using so you can only rank them so saying this data is ranked at fourth is uh, meaning this student is ranked in a group of uh, test or a yeah, group of sample you can say this student is coming fourth always or you can say the yeah in rank then um, central tendency we will use uh, in this one is easily able to calculate like mean and median we have why we will calculate median is like high likelihood of that person to be ranked at fourth position or fifth position always kind of thing or you can say here yeah, that uh, ranking of india in the world will be between this to this range so that time you will say median is we can use median here and saying that yeah our india's median will be this much or these types of countries will come within this rank actually something like that when you are using then you will use non uh, parametric and these parametric test are actually most powerful because <clears throat> because you already have a, a distribution about the data right then you can easily say yeah these are giving good results and uh, and when and you are easy to actually uh, reject the null hypothesis and saying that uh, this data is making uh, this this statistics and you can accept your alternate hypothesis actually and uh, in this one you will say these are less powerful because you are no clue about the data's uh, distribution you don't have all the parameters also but these are actually very uh, robust uh, in the sense you can apply on any type of situation most of the situation actually that is why they are robust in nature and these are some examples which we are talking about p test z test and over f test and psi square u test and uh, h test yeah uh, Rishi, when this testing needs to be performed like when we get a sample data so that time we need to apply either of the test and then we need to proceed with analysis of it oh yeah in real life how you will uh, do it is okay. like yeah yeah so mostly we will go for this parametric test where we have this assumption of the formal distribution and then based on the sample size or the characteristics of data we decide either t test or z test and then you the or you will follow all this those steps actually this one like what is your acceptance criteria and all someone will uh, suggest you yeah you should do hypothesis testing is this data is normally distributed or not kind of if such questions comes then actually you have to do this uh no non-parametric distribution because you are trying to fit the uh you are doing doing this uh fitness yeah goodness of fit uh, test actually there is size square test we call them and uh, humidity yeah some of one of the test we call them as a goodness of fit test and uh, when you know like data is uh, normally distributed at that time you can actually perform 
saying that yeah mean of that uh, student's uh, height is this or something like that mean of the data or standard deviation of the data you have or standard deviation of the population you have in those case you will use parametric test so these tests have some characteristics actually we will go into detail like when to apply them yeah so this we talked just now uh, these parametrics are always powerful because you are able to reject the null hypothesis and this one is less powerful because yeah we do not have more evidence to reject or accept the null hypothesis oh sorry it is reject or do not reject the null hypothesis so parametric test uh, yeah so t test uh is actually dependent on this student t distribution so what will happen is uh, you will calculate that matrix and you will check on the student student's t distribution that is why i think they are actually knowing this as a t test this is parametric test uh, developed by uh, one of the scientists i am uh, yeah william saley said and uh, these are actually applied when your sample size is small that is when we say sample size is small that is less than 30 and we do not have the population's standard deviation we only have the we only have the mean information of the samples so testing is significance difference of the mean values when sample is size is small so you can say in this case you will say my samples mean is uh, not equal to population's mean that is or you can say population mean has some yeah something which we do not know so we will have like our mean is not equal to population mean and this will be our alternate sorry null hypothesis and on top of that we will actually perform this test our assumptions was population distribution is normal samples are random and independent sample size is small and standard deviation we do not know actually similarly there is a counter meaning similar test which you will find for non-parametric and we call this as a man with neo test actually so you have to remember when to apply this test uh, that is sample sizes less than 30 and you do not have the standard deviation of the other with you of the population but you will have the standard deviation for sample so there can be two samples uh, one sample t test and two sample t test uh, so this how we calculate uh, when you want to compare with the sample mean to population we will use one sample t test when you want to compare two samples at all so what we you can have right suppose you or that you can have two sample right out of that population suppose population has very big so you can calculated one sample so you can say all the matrices are indexed with one you can call them as a population one and i calculated one more sample randomly so i will call them as a two so two samples you have then your uh, values and t value will come into picture and this we will calculate actually in this also x is a yeah this is the formula we are using to calculate this t value and based on this t value we will actually check if the it is greater than some table value when we will say we are rejecting the null hypothesis if it is lesser than do not reject the null hypothesis so that statistics table is there t distribution and if you find that t is lesser than the statistical value sorry t value is yeah lesser than then actually you, you oh okay. 
the value of t statistics is greater than the table value this value is lesser than table value then you will reject the null hypothesis yeah. how we are calculating it involves sample mean standard deviation sample size also we know and population mean also we know if we know population mean then only we can perform this test uh, and when we know do not know the population mean then we are actually comparing two samples so this is the way we perform t test Why? Any questions on this? Uh, 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 do you have any example of such which can be performed on this system? I couldn't like hear you clearly. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Can you speak a little louder? Yeah. Oh, yes. No, no. I was asking for a an example. A, oh, a small yeah. example which can be found for this ticket. Ah, yeah, yeah. So in this two sample, right, we already decided that sample size will be lesser than 30, right? So you are also calculating, uh, collecting the sample of 15 persons. I am also calculating 15 persons. And the populations mean I am not aware, available with you. Actually, why we are doing two samples? Actually, you are comparing two samples, right? What is are they two are same or different that is our question and your sample size is very small that is why we will use this t distributions actually that t distribution i what i remember i think it is also going to look like uh, this normally distributed but it's have some is thickness or yeah something is different t distribution curve but based on this value we can say are uh, like both the samples are same or not that is our in the two sample we want to conclude kind of and in this one sample mean and population when we are taking into consideration we are saying yeah population mean is same or to the sample mean or not that is our hypothesis here are this sample is really representing the population or not and why this is also easy to do because you assume that your sample is very small and population is like uh, in that case also population you can say one school is there so school is can act as a population for you in that case a class can be a sample where less than 30 people are there then you can calculate the mean of that any statistics or average of students marks or something like that then you can say they are representing in the same group or not this sample is representing the characteristics of the population or not and why because we are using only mean and that is why it's easier to calculate also so no way not easier but we are making a very small assumption on mean only so it is easy to do that statistics yeah conclude something on mean actually yeah examples i think i will come up with some examples also where how we apply them actually that is where i think you need examples and while understanding yeah, this test yeah description wise and how it is working that is for me yeah correct okay okay i will try to bring some examples yeah so generally what in the examples also or any questions what will happen they will give all this value <laughs> you just have to say this is my hypothesis meaning based on the question what so in exams or anywhere in the when you are doing this also you will know this population mean then only you can apply so you are aware like yeah of the schools uh, on average marks will be something like this is the marks is when of the class is same or not that is all your question is then you have this mean actually then you can you will given the sample all the average all the marks actually suppose 
then you will calculate the, this x bar that is number of mark, sum of the marks divided by number of students sample size you will also get s and sample standard deviation you will calculate by yourself actually then you have all this value so t will be get calculated because n is there mu is there mu naught is there where is the population and yeah sorry i forgot to tell whenever we are using not actually population related uh, parameter that is mu naught when we use that is parameters population sorry populations uh, mean uh, when we use sigma naught that is uh, standard deviation of population so this all values you will calculate then you will get some t and that t you will compare here with the t distribution and then you will say either i am going to reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis that is all yeah okay i will come up with the example one class we will set for examples yeah going through all the examples which we do not cover so far so this is t test when the sample size is lesser and similar to that also we have z test this is also parametric hypothesis testing and the i here the condition is sample size is greater than 30 this line and we know we have the mean of the groups or a population <clears throat> sorry uh, it is data whether to uh, used to determine whether the mean are different when the population variance is known actually in this case you know the population variance actually then you will use mean so you have to given a state problem you have to decide either you have to use the z or you have to use t or you have to use the ANOVA the next test when your all these assumptions are going to which one is actually fitting which test assumption and based on that assumption uh, you have to decide so these two are I think remain the same population is distribution is normal or independent only thing is now sample size is large and you know about the standard deviation of the population <clears throat> that time you will use z test similar to t test when we are comparing with the population mean and sample mean and uh, standard deviation later uh, s so remember we actually using here in the previous example t test we were using sigma where the it was samples mean a uh, samples is standard deviation but here we know the uh, standard deviation of the population then you will use standard deviation of the population to calculate z value z test or t value or z value actually yeah and this will actually again cal compared with the same we actually same way compare with the one distribution and reject or accept the null hypothesis yeah. similarly when you want to compare two different samples they are mean you will different samples you will use this value calculate this i have I think yeah this can be same also because and this can be different also first group and second group you will calculate the standard deviation and sample size oh there should be sample size of n1 and n2 okay yeah this formula comes into very so you can see the first term actually when this value will zero 
right you can directly say both samples have mean same sample right that is the idea so generally what you will say uh, x group 1 mean is not equal to group 1 group 2 mean that is your null hypothesis actually in this type of example and in this one you will say x bar is not equal to mu that is your assumption mu will be populations mean x bar is sample mean that's all in this one x bar is this is your this is going to act as your null hypothesis alternate will be same so in word you can say sample mean is not equal to or not same as population mean and in the word also here also you can say sample one mean is not equal to sample two mean or not same as sample two mean other way around uh, alternate will be sample one mean is same as sample two mean and you have to explicitly mention this mean actually in the standard deviation or you can say average actually <coughs> while writing a null hypothesis yeah we are only restricted to mean to compare actually so yeah remember this is very tricky question someone can ask also when to use t-test and when to use z-test so when your sample size is small and variance of population is not known obviously you will use t-test <coughs> and this is very obvious condition also sample size is large variance is known that z-test but the question will come like sample size is large but variance is not known then what to use z test <clears throat> then even sample size is small but variance is known of population you will use z test mm -hmm. the statement seems like local contradictory the t test is that is understood. If the data size is small, then we are uh, variance is also not known. Yeah. But variance is So Z test is like coming as an exception. It is uh, taking this second condition as uh, more precedence. Based on that, if population variance you know, then actually you can use Z test and sample size is large also oh any of the condition is true then you will use z test actually that's all or both of the condition that is all you have to remember yeah if both are true then very good you can use directly z test any one of them is also true you will use directly z test so it's very exclusive t test is very less frequently used actually in that case actually. you you can say that yeah so suppose someone asks some question you don't remember you can blindly say z test so there is highly likely three by four you will hit correct answer right? yeah but yeah not go with that i am just saying z test is used only either your sample size is large or variance is known or both the condition are met that's all and now we have one more f test where we compare with f distribution we have and uh, in this uh, we are actually comparing two populations or two normal population have same variance or not so previous two, two tests were actually comparing the means right remember we were actually writing calculating x bar or mu naught or x bar 1 x bar 2 means actually now we are actually comparing the variance that is why the null hypothesis will have always the statement saying that mu sigma 1 or here actually it is represented by s so s1 of one uh, distribution s1 of 
second distribution is same or not when they will same it will this value will be equal to 1 so what will null hypothesis in mathematical format they will write sigma 1 divided by sigma 2 should be equal to 1 or not so our assumption will be not equal to right <coughs> this will be h naught or null hypothesis yeah so this is equality of sample variance we are actually interested in to calculate that is why we are using f test actually so it is given by this person ronald fisher and that is why he used the first initial i think yeah f test named it and this is the formula f1 is saying nothing but it's a ratio of variance actually f statistics simple ratio of two variance <clears throat> and then you can calculate f test i think f test <clears throat> so f test is actually very flexible uh, why it is saying flexible you can use the changing the variance uh, in the ratio you can either say it is like less than 1 then you can say yeah sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 if greater than 1 you can also put such condition then saying sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 <laughs> so th in that way actually it is flexible and this we are using to test the overall significance of any regression model whenever we de do uh, compared to fitness fits of different models like we fit two different models actually and we want to check they are same or not and similarly we will do equality of means also we can check are they equal or not so and in this one we have same assumption population is normal distribution and sample size are randomly distributed and normally yeah independently yeah okay yeah you were asking um, i just been was stuck i think so oh, okay now it is fine yes okay so these are two and equality different models so compare the fits of different model significance on the regression model and yeah i will check what all the three examples we have or two any two example at least for f text and how to apply them yeah similarly these are uh, <clears throat> these are actually working for two or one sample that is uh, like uh, this is like why uh, yeah we are working on only two samples or one sample with the populations in the next test we are actually going to compare more than two or three <clears throat> so analysis of variance that is uh, given as ANOVA, AN of this, O of this, and VA variance, analysis of variance is a parametric test. So yeah, majority of the time, I think we will be using this where we are having more than one or three samples, more than two actually groups of samples. And we want to check significance differences between mean among these groups. So this is classic, yeah example of extension of t and z test and this is also developed by same person ronald fisher and that is why and it is used this <coughs> f test is equality of means and relative variance between them 
again the same thing is there uh, only thing is homogeneity of the sample variance is also required there are two ways of doing this uh, or test also uh, one ways and two way and uh, I also get confused while <laughs> reading this yeah so that is why I created this slide so I can remember and it is extension of t test because or z test is we are actually working on mean itself not going into beyond f test was doing something else right we were comparing the standard deviation so here we are doing on mean only so here you will write yeah x1 is equal to not equal to x2 is not equal to x3 three or more when it is going to come into picture you are more than two samples <coughs> sorry x1 bar x2 bar and x3 bar bar represents average right so that is why i am saying yeah this is an analysis of variance so yeah this this is very useful actually because yeah we you will always have more than uh, two samples and you are want to check all these th three samples are coming from same population or not <clears throat> in that case also you can do that analysis or these three samples are same or not then also you can do it also <clears throat> and uh, similarly you will calculate the one more statistics also you can do on this actually is that sample is correct or not between so what we say if you have three sample right so you can calculate the mean in between actually variance between the samples and variance within the sample also between the sample is this one you will calculate their variance actually are they different or not and within this also you can calculate so f similarly for the i think f test also used here relative variance between them or not so you will calculate variance between the samples divided by variance within the sample in that way you can use f statistics this will come into picture and uh, then actually you will tell something about the sample we will not go today i think here yeah, this non-parametric we can keep it for next class so yeah only thing is uh yeah we will need some examples to cover this yeah this is all about this parameter tested and uh, we can discuss more on the examples we will discuss next parametric class non-parametric in the next class otherwise yeah you will also get confused yeah oh. yeah and correct examples we need uh, either how we require okay Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I have for today. Start. Keep on discussing.